Good morning. This is Gina, and I'm excited to talk to you guys today about hyperpigmentation. You know, dark spots, melasma, hyperpigmentation, those are all things that are near and dear to my heart. Those are kind of uh, issues that I work on myself and have for years. So I've collected quite a bit of knowledge and different, um, did some investigating and seen different kinds of philosophies around hyperpigmentation and done a lot of work to really find out what really works and what doesn't. Um, hyperpigmentation can be very tricky to work with. And in the past, um, hyperpigmentation was really treated aggressively. We used a lot of aggressive ingredients, hydroquinone, a lot of um, peels, laser treatments, and really um, harsh treatments on the skin. And what we found is sometimes that works for a little while, but then what happens is the skin reacts and the skin thinks it's been wounded because it has been wounded and then it becomes more reactive. And so what I discovered about hyperpigmentation and what you're seeing more coming out of um, the, the professional brands, and the professional educators that are now talking about hyperpigmentation is that it's really an inflammatory problem. It's an inflammatory response. So we do, we know that rosacea, right, is an inflammatory response, but we often don't think of hyperpigmentation being that, and yet it is. And so when we think about treating rosacea, we're thinking about treating it with things that calm the skin. And so now we're starting to see a, a wonderful trend in that direction with hyperpigmentation. We're starting to see more products coming out that are more sophisticated and are actually including very anti-inflammatory ingredients um, into the mixture of things. So what causes hyperpigmentation? Hyperpigmentation is usually comes after a wound, but it also can come from hormone imbalance. How many people know that when they were pregnant carrying their children, that's when their melasma started? So definitely hormone induced. Um, we also see hyperpigmentation from UV damage. We see it from heat, just getting hot. You might notice if you live in a hot environment that even though you've got all your sunscreen on, hats on, and you're staying in the shade on a really hot day, you'll come home with darker pigmentation. That's because the heat actually triggers that inflammation response in the skin. Not only heat though, cold, so extreme temperatures. If you go into extreme cold conditions, then you're gonna find the same thing. Another thing that will contribute to hyperpigmentation is a compromised skin barrier. So remember, as I mentioned in the past, we were using a lot of harsh peels, harsh ingredients, a lot of glycolic acid, and a lot of hydroquinone, and we were compromising the skin barrier. So then the skin's getting dry. If you have dry skin, you are going to trigger more inflammation, which is gonna trigger more hyperpigmentation. So when we're working with hyperpigmentation, we have to take a very balanced approach, and we've gotta keep that skin very healthy. So I've been working using this philosophy for the last 10 years and I've had many clients that come to me and I get them on a protocol, get them going in this direction after trying all those extreme things. And then they're like, oh, this has made such a difference for me. Their skin really responds nicely to it. So let's talk about how we do treat hyperpigmentation. Now, keeping this um, inflammation information in mind. There's two ways that we treat hyperpigmentation. One is through exfoliation and the other one is through feeding the skin um, nutrients that are anti-inflammatory and also that inhibit tyrosinase action in the skin. So what I'm going to start with today is let's start with just your basics. Let's start with cleansing the skin, toning the skin, and exfoliating the skin. So when we are cleansing our skin, or exfoliating the skin, when you have hyperpigmentation, you want to be gentle with your skin. So um, let's start with cleansers. I pulled a couple of cleansers that I like that you might have something similar that will work for you. 
Um, one of them is from Rhonda Allison. This is one of my favorite cleansers. This is her Skin Brightening Cleanser. This is loaded with Bellus Perennis. Bellus Perennis is a very strong melanin suppressor, very similar to hydroquinone, but without the toxic effects that hydroquinone has. So this is a gel cleanser. I like it very much. And it is excellent for cleaning the skin without over stripping it. And it is particularly good for anybody with that more normal combination or oilier skin type. Another type of cleanser that you can look at is a vitamin C cleanser. Vitamin C is very brightening to the skin. Um, this one from Glymed is excellent. And this is a good cleanser for somebody who has that more normal to dry or very dry skin. This is more of a creamy vitamin C cleanser. So it's going to be brightening, but it's not going to be over drying the skin and it leaves the skin feeling moist and soft. Sometimes people use these in conjunction, you can mix them together or you can cleanse first with your vitamin C cleanser and then follow up with a skin brightening cleanser. Now, when it comes to toners, um, well, when it comes to ingredients, when we're looking at acids, what acids are safe to use or good to use with hyperpigmentation and ones do you want to kind of steer away from? So a couple acids that are, I find to be particularly useful with hyperpigmentation are lactic acid. Lactic acid is a gentle acid, non-inflammatory, um, really helps with light exfoliation and it has tyrosinase, natural tyrosinase inhibitors in it, yay. And it also helps to, it's also hydrating. So it helps to keep the skin moist so we're not going to compromise the barrier. The other acid that we like to use with hyperpigmentation is mandelic acid. Mandelic acid, again, is gentler than glycolic acid. It has antibacterial, antifungal properties, but it's also very brightening. So those are the kind of things when I'm looking for an active product, um, like an active toner, a treatment toner, or an exfoliant, those are going to be more, those gentler acids are what I'm going to look for. We sometimes do still use a little bit of glycolic acid, but we're going to be careful with how much glycolic acid we use, and we're not going to, we're going to try not to leave it on the skin. Um, if, for example, if you're using it as a toner or something like that, or a, a, um, a corrective serum. Um, glycolic acid is one we're going to kind of steer away from. Glycolic acid is, is a great exfoliant, so it will take off that hyperpigmentation and pretty fast. Um, but it's also going to be drying over time, which is going to compromise our skin barrier. And it's going to make us more photosensitive, more sensitive to the sun. So the pigmentation comes back faster. So, um, other acids, there's salicylic acid. Salicylic acid can be used for brightening, and it kind of just depends on your skin. Some people's skin react better with those beta acids, that, that's what the salicylic acid is, or their skin likes the alpha hydroxies, which is that lactic and that mandelic acid. So that, with that preface in mind, I wanted to show you guys a treatment toner. So there's toners that are hydrators and kind of nourishing, and then there's treatment toners, which actually have active ingredients in it to stimulate a change in the skin. Brightening Pigment Lotion, she changed the name of it, Brightening Pigment Tonic from Rhonda Allison is a classic, and it's been a staple in my cabinet for probably 20 years, ever since it came out, maybe 18 years ago. And it's loaded with that Bellus Perennis. It also has ingredients to... Um, calm inflammation and also to suppress melanin as well as lightly exfoliating to help lift off dark pigmentation. This is a non-drying toner, but high in active ingredients that are going to help balance out your toner. Now, if I've been out in the sun or in the heat even for a day, you know, my arms tend to be um, hyperpigmented. They tend to react really quickly. And so oftentimes after a shower or just even coming home, I'm spritzing this on my body and rubbing it in because it really helps to counteract that heat-induced hyperpigmentation or the sun-induced hyperpigmentation when you've been out and about in the weather. Okay, so 
we've got toners. We talk cleansers. We talk toners. Now I want to talk exfoliants because when we, it's time to exfoliate your skin with hyperpigmentation, you want something that's effective, but you want something that is not going to trigger more inflammation, cause sun sensitivity and all of that. So when I think about exfoliation for hyperpigmented skin, I'm looking at enzymes and I'm looking at manual exfoliation. So let's talk about what those are. Enzymes are organisms that are actually going to go and digest away dull, dead skin cells on the surface of the skin. It's not an acid, it's an enzyme, so it does not cause photosensitivity, but it's really going to remove that rough, dry skin on the surface. So when we're treating hyperpigmentation, we want to speed up that exfoliation to lift off that dark pigmentation that lives, lives on there. We want to speed up that exfoliation, but we want to do it gently and not with acids. So one of my favorite enzymes, I have a few different ones I'll show you. This is essential enzymes. And I like to use this with our dermadisc. So I'm going to show you that in a moment. Another enzyme that's very popular that people love around here is Rhonda Allison's Skin Brightening Enzyme. It comes in this little bottle and it comes in a bigger bottle. It has a very cooling effect on the skin and the enzymes in this are very brightening. Now, what I showed you that I like with enzymes is using the Dermadisc. And I have some videos. You guys can look for them on our video channel. or And I'm also going to be making some more really quick tutorials on how to use this. This is the Dermadisc. It has a diamond tip. Um, it has three different um, coarsenesses. So you can choose how coarse you want to be. And of course, with hyperpigmentation, we're going to be gentle. So we're just going to use the fine or the medium and using it on skin that you've applied the enzymes to and massaging it around has been the number one thing that my clients have reported lifts off that really stubborn hyperpigmentation. So this is a very powerful um, thing that you can do for your skin. You can do it once per week on your skin. Um, if you don't want to use that, another choice that's been well loved for a long time is Rhonda Allison Skin Brightening Scrub. So this is a scrub that you can gently massage onto your face, leave it on, and let those active ingredients go to work on your skin and then rinse it off. Also, um, people like to mix this. So you can mix it with one of the cleansers that I mentioned and use it as a little uh, daily cleanser that gives you a little bit of grit. So this is about manual exfoliating. So that's what, this is a manual exfoliation. This is manual with some brightening ingredients in it. This would be your chemical exfoliation would be your enzymes, but not acids. So enzymes and mechanical exfoliation are your two best friends when you have hyperpigmentation. Let's talk about the body. So as I mentioned, my arms tend to get very hyperpigmented. They're actually getting pretty good because I've been treating them. And I, this is what I've been using. The body skin is a little tougher. So I am actually using glycolic acid in these two products. This is the Refining Body Scrub and Refining Hand and Body Lotion from Glymed. But they pH balance this in such a way that it's not drying doesn't burn or sting or tingle. It's really lovely. The refining body scrub is like a cleansing gel with some nice beads in it. And it really helps to lift up and exfoliate that skin. And then the moisturizer goes on top of it. Really lovely, making my skin so soft, even um, more hydrated. It's just, I'm loving this stuff. So, but... That said, we are using glycolic acid on the skin here. So just like you put your sunscreen on your face every day, you've got to put your sunscreen on your arms every day as well, especially if you're like me and you're prone to hyperpigmentation, little speckles all over your arms. You've got to get that sunscreen on every single day. You just have to be religious about it. So, so consistent. Um, the other thing for the body that I have to mention, because so many people love this, it can be used for the face or the body, or a face and body in the shower. Many people like to foam up with this on their whole body and face, leave it on for as long as they can in the shower, and then rinse it off. 
This is the Pure Herb Clarity Brightening Cleansing Bar, and it's loaded with all these natural herbal Korean brightening herbs. It's really pretty. See how pretty that is? It looks like a leaf. It has a very strong um, scent. It smells very much like when you go into an acupuncturist's office. Very pungent herbal scent to it, but very nice brighteners in there. And this is excellent for summertime because there's not the acids in it. It's all herbal brighteners. So you're not going to cause your skin to become sun sensitive. Let's talk a little bit about the eyes. So if you have dark pigmentation spots around the eye area, favorite, favorite for that area is from Is Clinical. This is a vitamin C serum for the eyes. It really helps with photo damage. And I'll be talking about that on an upcoming um, session really soon. What does it mean to have um, photo damage or sun-induced premature aging and what does it look like? This goes after both. It's going to go after the sun damage in this area as well as dark spots in the area. But you've got to top it with something. So you've got your vitamin C serum for the eyes. And then, especially in the summer, I'm topping it with the Tizo. This is their eye renewal. This is an eye cream that also has an SPF in it. So it's really going to protect that eye area from the sun as well as nourish and help take care of lines and wrinkles and puffiness under the eyes. So this is my summertime duo for the eyes I had to share with you. Now, here's a fun fact. Tizo makes some of the best sunscreens. This is AM Replenish. This has a light tint to it and a nice blurring effect. So it makes the skin look really smooth. It has ceramides in it, vitamin C in it. So the great antioxidants in it. And fun fact is that this is in our discovery box. I'm one of our discovery boxes for this month. And that basically when you buy the discovery box, you're just paying for these two items and then you get all of the rest of the items for free. So it's a really good time to get yourself loaded up with a little extra sunscreen and get that box. I think it's called Gina's Traveling Essentials is the discovery box. And these are both in there and what a great value. You're going to get cleansers with it, moisturizers, all kinds of fun things. So I just wanted to give you guys that information before we dive in to serums. So let's get in here and let's talk about the serum choices that I use throughout the year. Now in the fall, in the winter is when I really go after my hyperpigmentation because during the spring and summer, I'm going outdoors, I'm vacationing, and I am just enjoying that time. And I want to use things that help manage my hyperpigmentation, but it's during the fall, but I'm not going to get too overly worked up about it. I'm not going to get nervous about it. I want you guys to enjoy life. I want to enjoy life. So we're, we're doing things in those months to manage it. But then after the fun's over, that's when we come in and we do some extra treatments to, to deal with that. So in the fall and the winter, I'm always coming on again and talking about hyperpigmentation and showing you what we're doing in those months. So real briefly, fall and winter is when I'm grabbing Rhonda Allison's Natural Mega Brightening Serum. And I'm using a retinol product at night. My favorite brightening one right now and firming is the Is Clinical's Retinol Emulsion. 0.3%, but we have a number of different retinols that I love, and it really depends on your skin because there's no one size fits all. So I have several different retinols that I'll use with my clients, but Natural Mega Brightening Serum has a very, very high amount of Bellis Perennis in it. So it's very similar to using hydroquinone on the skin without the negative effects for your liver and your body. So, but it's the same with hydroquinone in that you only want to use this for three months and then take a break from it. So this is what I grab in that winter time. Um, when I'm first go or fall, when I'm first going after that hyperpigmentation, I want to use something kind of strong and get a, a kickstart on it. I'm going to be using the natural mega brightening serum and then I'm going to use it during the day and night. And then I'm going to put retinol on it at nighttime. And just depending on what retinol I'm using, that will um, determine how often I'm using that night at night. Again, I'm being careful not to over dry the skin. 
So this is our kind of that powerful duo that we cycle on and off of because of that strength of that. So now I want to show you two other choices that I love for during when I'm taking my time off of Natural Mega Brightening Serum. And if Natural Mega Brightening Serum, as mentioned on here, is too drying for you or too active for you, um, if you've already got a bottle, what you can do with that is mix it with your moisturizer. That can be a real, a nice way to use it. Um, or um, when you finish that up, you can look at using one of these other combinations that I'm going to show you and you'll see why. So one of my favorites here that I've been using is the Is Clinical. Is Clinical makes a brightening complex and they make a brightening serum. Brightening complex is for those people with more sensitive skin, more reactive skin, drier skin. This is the serum my mom has vitiligo. And this is the serum I have her use morning and night. And it's made a huge difference because not only does she have vitiligo, but she's like me and she also had very dark pigment. So she had pigment loss. And then the areas where the pigment was still at was very dark. So using this, we were able to tone down those dark spots. And now her complexion is looking much more even. Um, then we also have from is clinical the brightening serum so this is a, a stronger step and this one it comes with a drop a little dropper this one it can be used if you have a little stronger skin you want to be a little more aggressive you use the complex in the morning and my mom even this is kind of like a light moisturizer she kind of uses this as her moisturizer under her sunscreen but um, this one can be used very hydrating protective calming um, use this one during the day and then you use the serum at nighttime. So this is the duo that you would use once you've cycled when you're taking a break or cycling off of these two. And what's kind of fun about this is it, use these two up, <laughs> then you get these and use these up. And then I'm going to show you one more combination that I'm really enjoying. I haven't used it through a summer yet because this is a new brand for us, but it's what I'm going to try out this summer and I'm excited about it. But once you try these three different combos and you kind of work through them, you find what your skin really likes. So what we have here for another choice that I love is from Glymed. They have what's called a daily skin clarifier. This is a brightening serum without acids in it. So it's got the licorice root, bearberry. It's got all these great tyrosinase inhibitors and anti-inflammatories, but there's no acids in it. And the reason I'm excited about this is because in the summer months, I'm outside a lot and I don't want to create photosensitivity and I don't want to have acids on my skin during the day when I'm out in that sun. I don't want to cause more reactive or more inflammation or reaction in my skin. So really excited to try out the Daily Skin Clarifier. At nighttime, what I'm going to be using is the Diamond Bright. The Diamond Bright um, Skin Illuminator can be used morning and night, but if I'm going to be in the sun, I'm going to grab the clarifying um, I have been testing this one out through the winter. I've been using it and trying it day and night, morning and night, and it works great. I've been really happy with seeing how it helps to lighten up and even out my complexion and just make, even on my neck, making that skin a more even skin tone. So really with hyperpigmentation, we have to take such a multi-pronged approach. In fact, I want to talk about that a little bit more. So um, internally looking at things that balance our hormones and reduce inflammation. So one of the things that we found around here that helps to balance our hormones is our beef liver supplement. Um, we take that, it can be very helpful. Um, Anti-inflammatory diets, you can do a little research online and see if there's one that appeals to you. Eating less grains, less seed oils, things like that that cause inflammation in the body those will be also good for internally balancing out that um, the hormones and things that cause that hyperpigmentation. Another a device that does that is our Myolift TriWave. The TriWave really goes to work on that lymphatic system, so it's really going to clear out 
the the negative hormones that are in the skin that are triggering that tyrosinase action, um, that melanin reaction. So using the triwave, this is a good time to get the triwave. This is my birthday month, so it comes with a fifty dollar gift card. And starting the first week of April, I'm going to be doing a deep dive intensive training with my TriWave users while I meet with them via a Facebook group. We, we're going to do live discussions once a week and really learn how to use our TriWave in lots of different ways because I have so many different ways I use this device. You'll be able to find the way that you like best. Another device that helps to clear hyperpigmentation is LED. So with the light stem, um, I love it. What you have to be careful with LED is that it can overheat the skin and the skin reacts to heat by making more pigmentation. So when we use the light stem, what I love about the light stem too is it's so quick. It's so powerful that you only need to use it for three minutes per side of your face, where a lot of times when you put those kind of masks on and stuff, in order to get the same amount of LED support that you get from a light stem, you'd have to leave it on for over an hour. So, but many of them even say you have to leave it on for 30 minutes. This is three minutes. And the way to use light stem when you have pigmentation prone skin is not to touch the skin, but to hold it just off the skin. So you feel the warmth, but it's not right down on the skin and we move it around. So you're doing one side of your face for three minutes, and then you do the other side of your face for three minutes. And this really recharges, light, LED light recharges the mitochondria of your skin. It gets it acting younger, helps to flush out, um, strengthen your cells, and flush out that hyperpigmentation and those um, hormones that stimulate that pigmentation response. So those are a couple things. Another thing I want to mention is that this year... I'm seeing more than ever people wanting to microneedle. So if you have hyperpigmentation and you're needling your skins with titanium needles, metal needles, usually you want titanium. Um, hopefully that would be the kind you would use. That titanium, inter, your skin reacts to that. So the skin can react if you're using it every other day or semi-regularly once a week, your skin will react to that titanium and can create more hyperpigmentation. So a better idea for microneedling is to use something like the Skin Wand. This um, does not have metal needles, so it's not going to cause that reaction in the skin. And it's something that is gentle enough. It has three speeds. It's gentle enough that you can use it daily or every other day to help penetrate these serums into the skin. When it's on its high, highest setting, it will even do gentle exfoliation, which can also be very helpful for lifting off hyperpigmentation. So being aware, I just wanted to bring that awareness out there because with hyperpigmentation, we've got to treat our skin properly and it doesn't always react the same as other people's skin. So just kind of being aware of these kind of things can be really helpful. And finally, um, and definitely not least, is pr protecting your skin. Wearing clothing that protects your skin, wearing a hat, wearing sunscreen every day. Even if you don't think you're going outside, wear your sunscreen every day. And my preference for you guys and for myself with hyperpigmentation is to use a natural sunscreen. So a natural block. Look for that zinc and titanium dioxide, zinc, those kinds of things. Chemical sunscreens create a chemical reaction on the skin and they will most often exacerbate your hyperpigmentation. So choosing a sunscreen that you love, we have a lot of them here so people can try the different ones. The one I mentioned today was that AM Replenish. It's one of our top selling, it's SPF 40. Really using your sunscreens and doing it every day. And when you're out in the sun for the day, reapplying. Um, we have some powders that you can reapply with. We have, oh, I love the dew drops from Sorella. Um, oh, we're going to have a new one from coming out soon from Taizo for reapplying this in a stick form. So you can just lather it on there and then rub it in. 
all of that is going to be super helpful. And if you have hyperpigmentation from breakouts, past breakouts, and it, it starts as a purple or red spot, right? But if we don't treat that area delicately, feed that skin, nourish that skin, keep the protection on it, keep your sunscreen on it. If we don't do that, we're going to have hyperpigmentation. Brown spots come from those. So want to really be careful when we are blemish prone that we're really protecting the skin from the environment because those, like we said, areas of the skin that have been damaged before are going to be more reactive to sun stimulation, heat, and cold. So using your sunscreen on those areas is going to be super important and feeding the skin really well. I love that somebody on here was using Neogenesis Skin Serum. That's an excellent food for the skin. And then adding into your routine, the daily skin clarifier from Glymed. That's going to be excellent food for your skin. And when you have what we call post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, that's where you have that leftover spot from a blemish, be patient with that. Baby that skin because when you still see red under there, it means there's still a lot of healing going on under the surface. There's still blood flow to that area. So that's when we want to support it with things like neogenesis and the the skin clarifying, daily skin clarifier. We want to be really nourishing that area as it's still healing. And sometimes it takes six to nine months for that skin to heal, but we can speed that up by using ingredients um, like this, um, like neogenesis, um, the recovery serum, skin serum, even the mist, the mist has a little vitamin C and it also has those good stem cell cytokines in there from neogenesis. And then using the other ingredients like the daily skin clarifier that's giving you the anti-inflammatory as well as the tyrosinase inhibitors in there. All right, you guys, this has been fun. Hyperpigmentation is a huge topic and it takes such a multi-pronged approach to really improving this condition from diet, internal, environmental influences between heat and cold and sun, and then choosing the right products that are really going to support your skin and not overdoing it, you know, really treating our skin gently. Don't use harsh acids. Don't use harsh retinols because when you compromise that skin barrier, it might be okay at first when it comes off, but it's just going to come right back the minute you expose yourself to heat, cold, or sun. That hyperpigmentation is going to come racing back because your body's trying to protect itself. All right, you guys. Take care. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and we'll see you again next week.